I'm Roger Sikowski from WebEducator.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can move beyond the basics of Python classes. I saw Mitt Sayers' excellent article on his blog, and he agreed to let us create this video to illustrate his examples. His blog article can be read at the address shown. Let's get started. Our first example is truly basic. It defines a point class. We can use this class to represent the coordinates of a point in three-dimensional space. It uses as an argument a tuple in the following manner. So we have a fairly general class that might be used in any program where working with points in three-dimensional space might be needed. Still, it's just a basic class and nothing really new about it. Let's move on to things that may be, in fact, new to us. First off, let's see what Python makes of our class as it stands. I'll add this statement and give it a run. There's no surprise here. Python reports that P1 is indeed a point. But that information isn't particularly useful if we want to know about the specifics of the point. We can make our class a bit more informative if we define a special method Python recognizes in our class as shown here. When point is used in a context requiring a string, Python will respond by executing this method. The only thing to keep in mind is that the return value is, in fact, a string. Let's try printing the point object again and see what happens. Now your program's user will be able to understand what P1 actually is. It also makes it easy for you to display points in your program as output, perhaps. Let's assume I need to calculate the distance between one point object and another in this three-dimensional space they live in. It seems only natural that we would expect an expression like the one shown here to do the job. Let's give this a run just to prove the point. Of course, it doesn't work. Python has no idea what to do uh, with the objects that we're giving it uh, in terms of a subtraction. We'll need to fix that problem next. We can teach Python how to subtract one point from another by overloading the operator as shown in the following method. The new method calculates the Euclidean distance and returns it. The neat thing about this method is that when you subtract something from point, it calls this method and returns the result of the subtraction. In this example, self refers to P1 and other to P2. Let's run it. So you've defined the subtraction operator for the point class. You can define other mathematical operators as well in the same fashion. I want to extend my thanks once again to Amit for the opportunity to present this video. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other great articles on Python best practices and more. 